I need you culture. You know what I mean? I need you. But at the same time, it's fuck you. I wouldn't even say it's like anti anything. It's like anti self. It's like anti me. It's like anti a part of me that I don't even like really. My needing and longing to be like a uh, super just like cool guy. So it's kind of like a fuck you to myself. <laughs> The Meg The Stallion song came out a couple days after I actually recorded the song, but at the same time, this song is, has nothing to do with that movement or anything like that. I just kept seeing captions and I made a song about the captions I was seeing. So she obviously had a huge impact on all of culture, not just rap fans or anything like that, because I am I guess I don't listen to enough rap because I, di I didn't know too much about it. I'm just like hoping she jumps on the song, like maybe she get on the remix, you know what I mean? Like that's, a, it's all love over here, you know? Fuck you and you and you and you and you. I hate your friends and they hate me too. There's a part in Half Baked where he's working at the, um, it's like the Good Burger. And he's like, he's looking at people. He's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I think a lot of people like reference that part of that movie. That's a big part of pop culture. It's just like kind of funny. And it's kind of like low key how we all feel. I'm through, I'm through. I'll throw this, that hot girl bummer anthem, turn it up and throw a tantrum. The melody and all that started from Andrew Goldstein. He had a, a voice note and I just loved it. And we built the whole song about it, you know, off that, yeah. Turn it up and throw a tantrum um, honestly almost feels sarcastic in a way. It's like, here's this big fuck you, turn it up, brother. This that hot girl bummer anthem, turn it up and throw a tantrum. This that throw up in your Birkin bag, hook up with someone random. My girlfriend actually had a friend that threw up in her Fendi bag, the one with the uh, puppet face on it, like the, or I don't know, it's like a Muppet. They're really expensive and I can't imagine it. you could get that dry cleaned after or whatever. It was like in an Uber or something. You get banned from Uber. I should have put that in the song because my rating is like 3.5 and it's probably because I was toting around friends that threw up in an Uber and stuff like that. Because I never threw up in an Uber, but no, maybe I have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't remember. This says social awkward suicide that buy your lips and buy your likes. They're for sale now. You can. I don't like have a stance. It's just kind of like what I was, what I'm seeing all the time. And like, I get filler in my face and stuff. I get lines because I smoke cigarettes. So I get like smoker lines and stuff like that. I get them, you know, shout out my Dr. Karimi. You know what I mean? I swear she had a man, but shit hit different when it's Thursday night. Thursday night. It's on and popping on Sunset. I like to go to One Ogre High. I have a friend that promotes um, on Wednesday nights actually, but it just didn't sound as good. Wednesday didn't, Thursday sounded better to me. This is that college dropout music. I'm a dropout. I wouldn't say it's a reference to Kanye. That's cool if you think it is, cause Kanye's really dope. It's kind of empowering people. I do get dragged out to the club and I do spend these money, this money on these tables and all this stuff. And like, I did drop out of school. And so did some of the biggest billionaires in the world. Uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Every day leg day, she be too thick. And my friends are all annoying, but we go dumb, yeah, we go stupid. It's something you hear when somebody's drunk or something like, oh my, I hate my friends. They're so annoying, but like, it's like it's your best friends, you know? It's just kind of like a, a thing that's said nowadays. Which is cool because people's honest. It's that 10K on a table just so we could feel secluded. And the vodka came diluted. When I do go to the club, like I have to, I have to get my section because I don't want to go to somebody else's table and drink their bottles. I've heard rumors that they dilute the vodka. I actually don't even drink. So like my last few experiences with the club have been like, I'm buying all these bottles for like other people to have fun. And I'm standing up on a, on a, on a couch of, whatever, even though like, you're not supposed to stand on the couches, but everybody does. And then you're just saying, fuck you to all these people, but like, you need them there. You need them people there to like feed your validation, your ego. I'm just kind of poking fun at myself this whole song, really. That's what it's really about, the whole thing. One more line, I'm superhuman, fuck you. The last line of the pre-chorus, it could be a drug reference. It could be the last line of the pre-chorus. That's a double entendre kind of thing. This is that hot girl bummer two step. I hope a dance comes out of it. Dances are always awesome. Back to the Soldier Boy days, like a dance will make a song if it's done right. So hope I can't dance. So hopefully somebody make up a dance, like even if it's on TikTok, whatever. They can't box me in. I'm too left. This that drip is more like oceans. They can't fit me in a Trojan. Out of pocket, but I'm always in my bag. Yeah, that's the slogan. This second verse start is kind of starts out like um, from a guy's point of view. The first verse is more from a girl's point of view. And so this one is is kind of things that I hear other guys say, or maybe I have said, or but I but the things I'm hearing people say all the time. Out of pocket is one. But 
in my bag is one too. So I don't know if I'm in my pockets or if that's not right. Should I be in my pockets? Should I be in my bag? Which, where should I put my hand? I don't know what to do with my hands. This, that, who's all there? I'm pulling up with an emo chick that's broken. I'm pulling up with that cool sad girl. And it's like, it's a, it's a look, it's a mood. In today's age, it, I know a lot of people that think it's very cool to be depressed. And like, I kind of do that. You know, on my Twitter, you read it. It's like, I might've been happy that day, but I'm like, I'll die waiting for you. It's kind of crazy, but isolating nowadays is like kind of cool. And it's, or it's cool to give off that vibe. Like I'm mysterious, but I'm like suicidal or something. I don't know what it is, but like that's, I, I do it all the time. College dropout music, everyday leg day, she be too thick. When I go to the gym, a lot of days are chest days and a lot of days are arm days and I don't do enough leg days. And I think it goes the same thing for females. Maybe they don't do as much arms or whatever it is. So like, that's just the view on it, yeah. And my friends are all annoying, but we go dumb yet, we go stupid. And you want me to change, fuck you. Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie is a very slept on movie. It's like really, really, really funny. And that part, is probably my favorite scene from the entire movie. And it's um, where Will Forte is uh, playing Alan fucking Bishopman from Easy Swords. And he's talking about like how he's not, the government pays him to not sell swords. And if he does, it's even better. If he, if he doesn't sell any swords, he's even better off. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like a really funny like thing. I just love the fuck you. And it's just, it, it was a vibe for sure. Please silence your cell phones. The dumbest genius in the world is about to start.